let me tell you, it's a treat when you find a ripened one on the tree. And I, and I found this guy yesterday or day before yesterday, and I said, you know what? This one's for Paul. This one's for the video. I'm going to leave it on. Here we are in front of the San Paolo. Yeah, we found a small San Paolo that's ripe. I couldn't find a bigger one. But uh, this will do for now because it's and this perfectly trees, ripe. The trees. This is like no other custard apple I've ever had before. Here we are with Julian at Laura Farms, and this is a custard apple tree. This variety is Fernandez. And how many varieties do you have? Um, I have um, the Fernandez, San Pablo, and um, a yellow skin one that I have in the ground um, that's white flesh. I really don't uh, show it off that much because I don't have a lot of trees, just have one tree in the ground. But it's the, it's the regular common. Um, custard apple that you find in the islands yellow skin white flesh and that that's why these varieties are very unique because they're um, red flesh inside or pink flesh inside which is unknown to most of uh, most of the um, natives that uh, have this in their in their homeland like Cuba Dominican Republic Haiti Jamaica you know all the islands and um, when they when they get shown these red flesh custard apples they just are just taken back completely because they've never seen anything like that they, n they never knew that there was anything like that so it's really cool stuff now I just did a video recently about custard apples and uh, my neighbor had bags and all those custard apples on his trees and I see on your tree it's loaded with uh, custard apples but you don't have any bags so tell us you were telling me the difference explain that to everybody why why you should do that if they're wild right. uh, seeded ones but these you don't have to right um you because custard apples they get they have a problem with um, the wasp. There's a special fruit wasp um, that lays eggs in the fruit, just like they do with papayas. And the eggs hatch, and they look for the seed, and that's what they eat. They eat the embryo of the seed, and after they finish eating the seed, they develop, they grow, and they grow wings, and then they drill their way out of the fruit, make little holes, and fly away. And start to process all over again. So on this case, on the Fernandez and the San Pablo, so San Pablo has very small seeds, just like Fernandez, and it's harder for the for the um, worms or the larvae to find the seeds because they're a lot smarter, smaller, and less less seeds um, than a regular custard apple. So they don't find it most most of the time, and they die and and um, leave the fruit unaffected by any damage. So that's the advantage with the Fernandez and with the San Paolo. They have very small seeds and few seeds and they get hardly no damage. If you find a hole on one of these fruits, you know, it's possible, but it's not very common. So and, bagging is not really a, a thing that's really necessary for, for these cultivars. And on the seeded ones that do get the bugs, it just destroys the fruit completely? It destroys the fruit completely. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, uh, you may have, you might get a little morsel here and there, but um, yeah, it, it turns the inside, just it dries it out. It, it, it destroys all the area around surrounding the seeds. Um, it's, and it's, it's really bad. So can you, if, can you get one of those that are still good? Does it mean a bug didn't go in there or can a bug go in there and the fruit still be good? It still be good. As so, long as they don't find the seed, it's gonna be almost non-existent. So you can possibly eat it though. Yeah, yeah. But these, you don't we'll have to worry about that. Now, do you have these trees for sale or just the fruit? Um, I have these trees. I had a whole bunch of these trees for sale on my website. My God, I had so many. And um, ever since it came into season, it just sold out completely. I mean, by the time the season came, I only had a handful left because, you know, a year on the Internet, almost a year on the Internet, they're going to go little by, li by, by little. But I've had both cultivars available, but now they're, they're all gone. But the good news is I'm grafting them right now. This is grafting season for, for Anonas. So I grafted plenty of, of San Pablo, plenty of uh, Fernandez, and plenty of the um, yellow skin, the white flesh yellow skin too. So hold on, it's gonna take a couple of months for these things to grow and be ready to, um, to be mailed out. Are these varieties from your seedlings or did you just get them, were they just well- the Seedlings? The, the, like where'd you get these two varieties from? Oh, well, you know, San Pablo, of course, everybody knows that's from Zill. And um, I don't know where he found it from. I think it's from Brazil. And then this this variety, I got it from my neighbor 
right back there. He uh, he approached uh, me and my dad. He was a good friend of my dad's. And maybe the, almost 20 years ago, he approached me and my dad over the fence and said, hey, come here and check out this custard apple. I've never seen anything like it. And um, gave it to my dad. We cut it open. Blood red inside. Not pink. Blood red. And we were just taken back. We are amazed. I was like, wow, where do you have this tree? So I was right there. I planted it from seed. So I was like, wow, man, you won the custard apple lottery. Wow. So... Um, <clears throat> we got some budwood and we grafted them and then we planted them here uh, and we decided to name it after him, Fernandez, Mr. Fernandez. All he right. was a, a marble smoker. He smoked a pack of reds every day. He lived to be 88 years old, lived it his way. He was a cool guy, so now does nice to have a memory of him. Does the San Paulo and the Fernandez taste the same or different? Um, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think I like Fernandez better. Just, you know, optically, just looking at it, it's more attractive. It's blood red. It looks like a, an alama. But, um, you know, it's a really a custard apple. It tastes like a custard apple. I just find it to be a little bit more dense than a San Paolo. You know, everybody has their own opinion, their own their own um, palate. But for me, I feel it a little bit more dense and very, very fine grain. It's not, it's not a sandy custard apple. Okay. So there's one on the tree here that's ripe. Yes. Now, do they all have to be picked ripe? Let me tell you, they don't have to be picked ripe. They'll ripen fine. But let me tell you, it's a treat when you find a ripened one on the tree. And I, and I found this guy yesterday or day before yesterday. And I said, you know what? This one's for Paul. This one's for the video. I'm going to leave it on. And now, when they're not ripe, how do you know when to pick them? Um, time of the year. You know, it's if it's, you know, if you're in March, March is usually the time we pick uh, custard apples. If you leave it on until April, and they don't fall off the tree on you, you're lucky. So you might as well just start picking them in. in uh, but if somebody in has their own small tree in their own yard for themselves, they should wait till ah, they get right? Wait till they blush. I, w I always like, even with, like when I sell them, I like for them to be blushing a little bit red on the tree. That will be perfect. But in, in some cases, you can't wait. You have to just cut it. And they just ripen fine. And when you sell these on your site, you pick them the same day and ship them out the same day, that's right? right? That's right. That's right. That's, that's becoming my, my trademark. Yes. Picked and shipped the same day. Nice. It's nice. very important to me. All right. So uh, he's going to cut this now and cut it open right now. So. Yeah. So when I take it from the tree, I mean, look at that. It's It yields to slight pressure. Look at that. It's amazing. So when I pick it, I'm just going to I'm just gonna twist it here. Ooh. And it just the core just comes right off. This is like no other custard apple I've ever had before. I have to have this tree. Is that what you want? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Nice. And and then I smell, smell the condensed milk. Yeah, smell that. Wow. Wow, so good. It's powerful. Yes. And then, um, you know, if you want to take pictures of it, you can just um, look at that. It has like a natural wax. Then when you polish it. It's a red, shiny red. Yeah, it gets shiny. Red. I usually get a little bit of oil and just rub it down to take pictures of it. But and I want people to know how big this is because the ones my neighbor had that were seedlings were so much smaller. This mm. is so big. Yeah. So you ready to cut this open? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. Here we go. So I'm just gonna go like this. And here we go, guys. Wow. Fernandez custard apple. Wow. And now we were talking about the seeds and how small they are. Let's take a look at this guy. Yeah. It's like a little dot. Yeah, look how small they are. Oh, this one's coming out. There you go. We should do a comparison from regular seeds and uh, the Fernandez. I think I have one on my Instagram, the comparison of regular seeds and this guy. But here we All go. Right, there it is. And I'll put the link below if you guys want to. Get this. And this is going to be, a, 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 right now I just have San Pablo for sale on my on my website. But um, this week, I just, I mean, the longer I wait, the better. Because I want these things to be very good, to be um, very ripe. But um, they're going to be available this week, Fernandez. And they're not going to last very long. But uh, they're going to they're gonna be available. So you got to keep your eyes out because I don't know when I'm going to put this on. I'll let everybody know as soon as they're on there. But you got to get them fast because I know they uh, 
They sell out fast. All right, so you want to try one of these? Yeah, All yeah. Right, get over here. Crouch down here. Almost looks like a watermelon. With the black seeds. That'd be our breakfast, at least for me. All right, one of the benefits of doing what I do here. <laughs> this is going to be great. Wow. Wow. I said in a previous video that this is one of the sweetest fruits you'll ever taste. And it's true. Wow. And these seeds come true to seed, like 80% true to seed, I think. So if you get to save those seeds, do you know what seed he planted to get this variety? No, I never got around to ask the guy. Mr. Fernandez, what did you use? What, Where did you find the seed that you planted? I was too young, I was 20 years There's old. There's the tiny seeds. Wow. Look. That is amazing. Here's the size of the seeds. Very small. You know I'm eating this and I'm not eating a wasp. Feels mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I'm you, the wasp is a serious problem. Custard apple. You just destroy the fruit. That is delicious. Wow. And they can just go to your website. One click. I wish when I was getting into this, there were websites where you just one click and this could be at your door in a couple of days. Yep. Amazing. You know, if you live in Florida, it'll be one day. One day. But they can also come here and get it too if they was out here, right? Uh, not really. I want to fulfill orders, and I don't know what I'm going to have left over. Have to fulfill the orders. <clears throat> so I don't want to disappoint anybody. Wow, thank you. What a gift. This is amazing. So if you plant this seed, how long before you have a tree and fruit? Um, probably like five years. Hey, here we are in front of the San Paolo. Yeah, we found a small San Paolo that's ripe. I couldn't find a bigger one. But uh, this will do for now because it's and this perfectly tree's, ripe. The tree is much bigger. And it's perfectly ripe, and there's no holes in it. Amazing. Yeah, it has some some anthracnose, some anthracnose scars, but um, it's fine. We're gonna take out the core. Wow. And then let's cut it open here. What we're getting yet? And then we're gonna open it up. Ooh. That one has a little bit more white in it than the Fernandez. Yeah, this, a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, San Pablo tends to be more pink inside than red. But who cares? Absolutely. Let's uh, <laughs> taste this one. This is the one I had on the video a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and uh, it was this, to me is one of the sweetest fruits I've ever had. Oh, let's get one. Yeah. Let's see here. Here, take a. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Alrighty. Here we go. Check it out. And the seeds are small in this one as well. Mm. Now, to me, that's sweeter. I mean, I know you like the it's other one. super ripe. Because this one is more ripe than the Fernandez. So Fernandez could have taken like another wow. half a day more to ripe. But this one's super ripe and super soft. Yeah, to me, this is the sweetest fruit. And mm. I love sweet. Small seeds. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, this one's completely right. The other one could have used another day to get softer. The other one was extremely sweet. Extremely sweet. Wow. And this is popular in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Pal corazón. So you can go there and find this in, in the supermarket? Probably. In the farmer's market. Wow. So how long before this goes bad now that it's ripe now? Mm. 
just like anything else. You know, like five days later is going to be mush. Now, if you were going to blend this up, obviously you got to take out the seeds first, right? Mm -hmm. That's my issue with some of the, what is the atom oils? They have so much seeds. Mm -hmm. Even a cherimoy, there's so much seeds in there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do something like this. But this, the seeds come out easy. Mm -hmm. And these, not yet, but you'll have them soon on your website. Right, sold out. I sold out just recently. It took me um, almost a whole year to sell out. As soon as these fruits came into it came into season, the little I have left were gone. Right. But it's grafting season now. We finished grafting a whole bunch of San Pablo's and Fernandez and yellows. So I, I would say you know a couple of months, two three months from now, they'll be ready to sell. They'll be back up soon. Well, everybody. I'm telling you, this website, dude, he picked them the same day. What more can you ask for? And I know there's a lot of other people, now not a lot, but there's some other people that sell fruit online, and they're getting them from the area, but they're not shipping them the same day. They're not even their own trees sometimes. So he knows what he's growing, and he'll get it in the mail to you the same day. And if you've tasted his fruit after seeing my videos or got a tree from him, Put that below the video in the comments and let people know because uh, this is great. And talk about customer service. Now, I don't know. I got to mention this. I mean, he ships out a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, but nothing's perfect. And occasionally uh, something might happen with the shipping or something, and he takes care of them. It's amazing. You yeah, know, customer I, service is important. I agree. Um, I like everybody to have a good experience. If, whenever there's an issue, you know, I like to resolve it right away. Yeah, yeah. So... The links below the video. I, lo I love the website. I look at this website just because I want to learn about all the different varieties. I've had custard apples before, uh, apples before, and I didn't really like them. They had too many seeds. They weren't that good. <laughs> you come taste these. These are the sweetest fruits I've ever tasted, and also uh, one of my favorites. And you know, you got to pick and choose what you want. But I know I can't grow them all uh, because I don't have that much room. But I know I can just go on the internet and click click away, and then I could have it at my front door, which is amazing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, well, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. For those of you uh, that are looking for a tree, uh, notice the San Pablo is a much bigger tree, right? Yeah, um, San Pablo grows to be a, a large tree, but you can always control that, you know, with a chainsaw. Yes. After five years and it's too big, you just take a chainsaw and cut the most vertical branch, the one that grows straight up, just cut that and leave all the lateral. Or you can prune it as it's growing and never let it get that big, right? Correct. Uh, so this is, but this is the... Fr uh, Fernandez one mm -hmm. and it's not big at all. I mean this tree is 20 years old, right? This tree is 20 years old and um, it's it, and I have more than one here. I have about five and you can see how they they're very bushy and they stay very compact. Very. I mean this tree can't be more than maybe 12 feet tall the most. Mm -hmm. So you know wow. it's, a, it's a dwarf compared to a San Pablo. San Pablo um, it's a massive tree when it gets, when it gets old. So if you don't have enough room, this is the one you want in terms of height wise. Yeah. This so, is probably like, you know, that one and the and the first one, probably the biggest trees I have in the ground here. And they're 20 years old. And you never prune them? No. The hurricanes have pruned them. The last couple of hurricanes pruned it for me. Besides, the, besides that uh, beetle we were talking about that gets in wasp. there. Wasp. Besides that wasp, what other diseases? is to worry about with um, this. Well, they get anthracnose, just like mangoes. I mean, I was looking at a, at a fruit around here that was diseased. But uh, you gotta be careful when it rains. When it rains, it, it, you, you know, it'll be a good time to come out and spray with copper side. You know, to protect the tree, just give it a shield against the anthracnose. So uh, this is uh, the Fernandez, and we're gonna look in a little while at the San Paulo trees that are like four times the size of this tree. Yeah. And uh, these Hopefully you, can, you can find the fruit. Yeah, because those were amazing as well. And uh, yeah, these dwarf trees here are great. And I, another thing that's great is we're off season. Mangoes aren't in season yet, and star fruit just came out of season. And Camito and these custard apples are in season. So yeah. if you want to have fruit all year. You want this in your collection? Yeah, because things come and go throughout the year. You know, um, Caimito, you know, uh, started very early in the year for me. 
<clears throat> and um, the ones that I have usually last from January to June. And, um, and then these come in in March, so you have something extra. And, uh, you know, there's other things popping out. There's sapodilla and there's um, Mysore raspberry, which uh, is pretty nice. Um, and then pretty soon I'll have Mamea Americana. If I, um, anybody's familiar with that, it's, uh, they call it um, Antillian apricot. It tastes like a sun-dried apricot. It's a really good fruit. It's one of my favorites. And uh, hopefully we can have some of those uh, to show off, hopefully next month. So things come and go. And, uh, you know, hopefully the next thing on the list will be mango. And that'll be uh, in a few more months from now. Still a little bit long. What's the most unique way. mango you have here on the farm? Most unique mango? Um, best mango for me still is the Gary mango. That one and the Alampur Benishan. Those two and the lemon meringue. Because still, sometimes I ask myself, should I cut everything down and plant lemon meringue? It wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. That's a really good mango. Nice, nice. Well, this is the place, everybody, for trees and fruit all online, shipped to you. I'm meeting more and more people that got trees from you and fruit from you, and they, they're just all excited about it. Good. It's very important to, very important to me that they, uh, they have a good experience. Yes, yes. And we've been here before. We, we looked at his avocados and all his other fruit. And that's what we're going to do every season. Something's in season. We're going to come down and check it out. But Absolutely. we're going to go look at all of uh, the other custard apples that he has now. There's the yellow one, actually. Show us the yellow one. Oh, yeah. You know, the yellow one has become like a unique one now since, you know, San Pablo and Fernandez have taken over the market. Seeing a regular old school classic custard apple has become pretty. Now, when you say the rare. market, let me ask you this here. Uh, I don't see these on the market. I mean, you can't go, you can go and even on Whole Foods, you could find passion fruit and things like that and dragon, but you can't find these. They really don't have them on the market too much. Right. So no, no, these are not, they're not grown enough. Is that why? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see my main in the market. My main you see in the market. Yeah, because it's been around since the 80s. You know, people have been grafting these since the 80s. This have been grafted since the early 2000s, so we need like another 20 years to, to go by. And the real estate around here has gone up. So it's not like before where people will buy some land and plant 20 acres of mame or 20 acres of custard apple. You know, it's too risky. So we're, we're probably never going to see custard apples in the supermarket. Okay. Unfortunately. Well, at least people like you have it, so. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, look. We got one puncture from a wasp here. And the whole fruit. Just one yeah. puncture. When I've seen them before, not here, but at other places, they're, they're everywhere. So that's pretty good. So there's a yellow one now he's going to show us. Yeah. Well, they start off green. They start off green, they turn yellow. Right. And the inside is all white on those? Yeah, it's all white. Wow. Yeah, this one has some kind of damage here. It looks like from, uh, looks like some kind of knife damage. Now, if you get a white one, would it be easier to spot a wasp inside it or not necessarily? No, you, they, don't, they don't hang out. They, they drill their way out. Once they Got develop it. wings and they finish eating, they just drill their way out. Only thing you can see was, is the hole they, they use the, to find their way out and fly away. Wow. But it's white flesh. It's very creamy. Some people like the white flesh better than the red flesh. I wish I had a white one here that's ripe so you can taste it. Maybe you can come back one day and do that. But um, some people like this one better than the reds. How old is this tree? Uh, it's probably 10 years old or almost 10 years old. So how come it's not as bushy as the other trees? Ah, because it's a totally different animal. Totally different animal. This guy grows differently. You know, every time you plant the seed, you get a new thing, you know. Like I've said before, you can grow up to be a doctor or it can grow up to be a delinquent. And when you get a doctor, that's when you want to graft it. So this guy, you know, this guy he likes to grow straight up like a candle, like the Fernandez. I mean, not the, the Fernandez, like the San Pablo, likes to grow straight up <coughs> and make uh, yellow skin fruit. So this one <coughs> originally was a seedling that my dad planted behind the office at the, at the farm. And it made beautiful, large red fruit, um, yellow fruit. So I, you know, got some budwood from that tree. I had a bad feeling something was going to happen to that tree goes behind the office. So we grafted some and we managed to plant one back here where it's safer. 
and the one behind the office died from a hurricane. I don't even remember when. I think it was 2005. How long did it take when he planted the seed to get that first fruit? Oh, uh, like between four or five years. Wow. Yeah. That's and wonderful. I, I have a friend who has one in his backyard, a grafted tree. They got some budwood and grafted it, top worked it on his reticulata. And well, I mean, he really fertilizes the heck out of it. And he got some really big yellow ones like that. So this one has the potential of making big fruit. You just got to feed it a lot of fertilizer. Now the sugar apple and the custard apple are in the same family, so you can graft one onto the other, right? No. No. No, they're okay. not compatible for grafting. Oh, you can't graft Adamoya on reticulata. You can't graft Anona on reticulata. Reticulata kind of likes to be grafted on its own. What what family is soursop in? Same family. I've seen soursop grafted onto... Uh, Either sugar apple or custard apple on on in, from India. I see them doing it. Yeah, um, some other varieties are compatible with each other, but this one um, I grafted some Adamoya, which is the hybrid between sugar apple and the South American Chirimoya, and they graft hook and they grew up to six or seven feet, and then <clears throat> the graft separated. After you know the graft is like this, the the the, the trunk was this thick. It just separated, just just unglued itself and, and it died after like wow. I don't know how many years of growing and no problem so I asked my dad what was that about he said, oh that's incompatibility and it showed up soon it was gonna show up sooner or later so gotta be careful it's better grafting on the same thing unless there's been you know proven research that is compatible like for example Salzmani Anona Salzmani if I'm pronouncing it correctly is compatible to soursop you can graft sell money on soursop and you know there's other stuff you could do you know that kind of trick with but uh, you gotta you gotta know what you're doing yeah wow all right we're in a field here of custard apples we're gonna go take a look at some trees with the san paulo one on it but man i'm gonna put the link below if you want to taste these even if you just want to taste them even if you're not interested in getting them all the time Get the link below before he runs out because it's an amazing experience. Here's some uh, San Paolo's right in front of his house. He has uh, two or three trees here. And this is a beautiful fruit. And this is the one. Wow, so sweet. And the Fernandez was sweet as well. It's just amazing. Amazing. So, get them on his website while they still last. I was at Laura Farms yesterday in. Miami, actually Dade County, which is the Redlands, and it's an amazing place, and they have a whole bunch of different fruit. Well, this fruit uh, usually is not in season now, uh, but blessed be me, uh, there were some fruits that was on a tree that was in season. This is a custard apple, and it's perfectly ripe. Look how beautiful that is inside. Wow. Okay, I had a wonderful day at Laura Farms, and look what I got. These are two of the custard apples. These were the these were the San Paulos or the Fernandez. I don't remember which one they were, but this one's a Fernandez. And I also got some of the star apples. So I'm so excited. So good. And just so you know, if you buy this from his website, one of these, it, you can't eat one whole one without getting completely full. I mean, this is big. This is, is this, and it's filling. It's not like a lot of fruit's not filling. This is filling. So, I'm gonna eat it more appropriate now because I ate it earlier without a spoon or anything. That, it's just so sweet. Please, anyone that knows me and you haven't tried fruits other than your normal bananas and apples, <laughs> please go to his website below the video and get this fruit. Order one of them, I don't care. Order like, just, just taste it. It's absolutely amazing. Just when you think fruit can't get any better. Wow, and then there's the little seeds he was talking about. I'm gonna hold those and plant those, but wow. It's amazing. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go below and check it out. And uh, thanks again, Julian, for your great products. 
and fruit and uh, for what you do. Enjoy.